Hello and welcome to this little talk about Squish Coco and code coverage. My name is Sebastian Paulsen and I'm a software engineer at FrogLogic. You may ask yourself, what is code coverage and what is Squish Coco? Those two topics are handled in this presentation. So follow me. Imagine your software project is a big zoo. You as the test manager are the zoo director. And the test you've been writing are your zoo keepers. You try to get every task done at the zoo. So the coverage in this case is the amount of task that has been done in a certain amount of time. The tasks that don't have been done, you gotta do. So your goal is to let the zookeepers or your tests do all the work. But on a software project, as well as a big zoo, it's hard to manage every task and to manage every zookeeper in this case. So how to get the data out of the execution out of your software project. And that's where Coco starts. So how does Coco work? Coco supports more than the average f different coverage types and coverage levels. So there are several of them. Function coverage, line coverage, statement block coverage, and so on. In this example here, we only handle the function coverage, but Keep in mind that Coco supports all of those listed on the right. But how does Coco do it? How does Coco instrument the code and get the coverage? So follow me on this one. Here on the left side, you can see your normal execution of your comp uh, compiler. You've got your source code, your headers, files, which are then pre-processed by the compiler and generated into object files. Those object files are linked with the library files in the linker, which this results in a binary. Coco, on the other hand, treats things differently. At the preprocessor stage, Coco adds code for measuring the coverage. This code is then given to the normal compiler, which then creates its normal workflow. But the linker generates a so-called CSMS file. This CSMS file contains all the data which is necessary for Coco to instrument your code. But how does this work? How does Coco get the data from your application? So follow me on this one. You have got your binary and you execute it like you would normally do or run your test. This will generate in CSXO file. This CSXO file and the CSMS files are given to the coverage browser. The coverage browser then allows to generate the coverage of your code, of your tests and of the current execution. But you may ask yourself, which languages do we support? We support C, C++, Tickle, C Sharp and QML. And the next question would be, which compilers do we support? You can see here the basic ones and furthermore, the only thing you have to do is to adapt to your compiler. But on which platforms do those work? Coco is basically working on all platforms where you can execute the code even on your embedded devices. So now let's do a little demo, should we? And see how Coco does things. I prepared a little example here of a zoo. This contains the zoo with the header and the C++ file, as well as this, our tests, our unit tests of the zoo. So, this is a normal C++ project, so there's also a make file. Let's jump into the zoo and check how it's implemented. 
It's a really simple example where you feed the elephant, feed the lion, feed the snake, or pet them. These are the tasks basically for your zookeepers. So let's jump over to the to the C++ part. And it's, it's really easy. If a zebra is fed, if then it's true and it returns true. So when we look now at the tests, up here we see that zookeeper Linus is one of the test cases. So Linus works as shift. And these tests are written with the catch framework for C++ unit tests. So these functions here at the front are always from the catch framework. These functions here in the middle, as you can see, are the functions at the zoo. So zookeeper Linus is feeding the lion, for example. This two here, these two lines here are code coverage scanner relevant because we tell Coco which part of the test execution is for which test, basically. So when we do our normal instrumentation, or we instrumentation, instrument the code with Coco, in this case, we make the normal command we would do in our normal project. So now you can see that next to the program, the CSMS file is generated. Let's look at the CSMS file in the coverage browser. So I already opened the coverage browser and we can now open the CSMS file. We open the CSMS file and get all the data and information in the CSMS file. So now we can see here on the left the functions that are in the zoo. We know those. And here is our C++ file and we can actually click on it and see the source code. So here now is no coverage as you can see up here. The current stage is function coverage, but we can switch here in this part. And here, down here will our executions appear. But first we need to execute our tests and Doing this is easy by running test program. Now the tests have been run and we see that the CSX file is generated. So with the CSMS file and the CSX file we can now see the coverage. So we load into our existing CSMS file the execution report. For this case, we have this little device which tells us to import all the executions. And now we can actually see the coverage. The coverage is 100%. Every function has been hit. And down here we can see the, the specific shifts of the specific zookeepers. For example, if we select only Linus shift, we get the 40% coverage, which is down here, and we actually can see which function does he invoke. So, imagine we have our software project and we add things to our software project. So how is this been doing? So let's let's for example edit the zoo. So what we are doing here now is adding another species. Adding another species is easy here in this example. And we just add frogs. And just type it in line here to make it easier and to make it a bit difficult f 
for Coco to realize that this function is defined in the header. So what we're trying now is to implement the functions here in the header and check if Coco recognized us them. Obviously, none of the zookeepers we can see in the in the in the tests is executing the pet frog or feed frog. So those shouldn't have been matched. So what we are doing now is running again, building again, and then running again. So let's clean this. Now it's clean and make it again with the instrument. Make clean. Oh, I already done that. So this is the right thing. So now we can see again the CS mess file is generated. And we can further now execute the tests. Now we should see that the frog and as well as the as the um, feed frog and the pet frog shouldn't have been um, executed. So I'm running now the coverage scanner. Now we open the coverage browser again and open the source files new. So now we can see here there are two files appearing, not only the C++ file as well as the header, header file where it detected functions. So loading again, the execution report shows that those two functions have never been hit. So we had to adjust our tests. In this case, we should head back to test.cpp and add another shift, another zookeeper to include those two tests. But there are more features of code coverage and code coverage browser here. So one ex interesting thing is, for example, dead code. You can switch between dead code. Oh, here. This statement will never be reached. So Coco can help you with those parts of your code which have, have never been executed, which have basically never been tested, and further features more. So let's head back to our project. Okay, now let's see how can you integrate Coco into your Jenkins. That's pretty easy. I set up a little example here. As you can see here, it's a normal build and we can get Coco to report an HTML report which we then can see in our Jenkins integration. So this is our project and as you can see it's 100%. So this is the late stage of our project. There is no frog but you can see all the functions that have been hit and also the dead code at the end. This is particularly handy when you don't have a coverage scanner or coverage browser installed at your system and you still want to see the test results as a test manager, for example. And furthermore, there are more features. Let's get back to the project and see something about patch analysis. Patch analysis is pretty easy with Coco. So we changed, as you remember, the feed frog and the pet frog to our project. So what we do now is add those to our repository by just typing 
to edit to git, we inserted it and we pushed it. So now we should make the program again by instrumenting the code and running the code. These two files are then also opened here by opening those and loading the execution protocol again. We get our coverage data as before, but now we can do some patch analysis by comparing the last commit with this commit and piping it into a project diff file. With this diff file, we can now generate a patch file analysis. So we select the project.diff file and run output, which will generate an output HTML. As you can see now in the project folder, we have our output and our project. So we open now the output HTML and see here our new lines for this commit, the edit frog commit. And we see here that there are some modified lines that has not been executed actually too and it actually shows which lines this also can be integrated into jenkins as well these features and more features like bug location elog effective lines of codes and the mccabe complexity level and even more can be found in coco if you got further questions, visit us at froglogic.com. Thanks.